Hello. So, I recorded uh, one main part of this video yesterday and then added a couple of additions. And I realized last night I should add one more, which is kind of the legalese. I am not a medical doctor. I am not offering medical advice. I am giving you my understanding of, of health and it is fully your responsibility f to make decisions about your health and uh, consult medical doctors when appropriate. So that said, you know, some of the most important things that I've learned in my understanding of holistic health have come from medical doctors. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of good ones out there, maybe not a very high percentage, and, you know, as far as, uh, you know, being holistically minded, but that's, that's growing, and uh, as part of my mission in life is to help re-educate the, uh, the doctoring profession. Um, so, what I lay out in the, uh, the minutes to come are treatments. They're holistic, natural, nutrition-based treatments. Because what I have learned is that the only true cure for any disease is emotional-based. And uh, so, that said, enjoy. So, I just uh, finished watching the recording, and as I was listening, I was like, you know, I really should include two other supplements. Uh, those being vitamin D and vitamin B12. So the only uh, nutritional supplements that I take regularly, uh, I take iodine daily and I take B12 once a week. I take a 5,000 microgram chewable. Um, and then generally only in the winter time, uh, you know, the one of the things that I learned about early on in my career as a uh, naturopathy uh, practitioner um, was that once the sun is not doesn't get above 30 degrees above the horizon um, the ultraviolet B light that needs to hit your skin to transform cholesterol into vitamin D at least you know the the first stage of vitamin D, it then gets converted in your liver and then finally gets converted again in your kidneys before it's like the fully active form. Um, so there's this research showing that to get 98% of people to sufficient levels of vitamin D, you have to give the population about 10,000 international units a day. Um, probably your medical doctor would be afraid if you were taking that amount, but the safety of it is super high. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are circumstances with uh, you know, poor liver, poor kidney function where high dosages could be a problem, but Talk to your medical doctor about that. Um, sh you know, have you know, be familiar with the research that I'll include in the description um, about the, you know, the 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 way to go. You know, how much to take given your particular circumstances. Um, pretty much anybody should be perfectly fine with 2,000 IU a day. Um, when I take uh, vitamin D in the winter time, I'm generally taking 10,000 IU. 
Um, so once once the spring spring sun starts going above that 30 degree mark above the horizon, then I stop taking it. Um, so yeah, B12. It's water soluble. There's basically no tox, you know, virtually no toxicity. Um, if you're older, you should be taking, you know, thousand, two thousand micrograms every single day. Um, I think it's two thousand. Um, but I've got my mom taken. Um, she's eighty-six. So yeah, the you need strong stomach acid to absorb. B12, and uh, the older you get, the generally the less uh, less strong your stomach acid is, and that reduces the body's ability to absorb B12. Um, and you know, vitamin D, you know, just you know, as a as a plant-based uh, person now, um, you know, B12 is like considered to be the must take. Um, generally people who are eating you know, beef and chicken and fish and whatnot, um, especially the, you know, the land-based livestock, the livestock is generally being fed uh, B12 or injected with B12. Um, but, you know, as I said, the reduction in stomach acid reduces the body's ability to absorb B12. So even if you're you know, eating fortified B12 fortified beef, um, you could still end up being low in B12. Uh, and uh, the research on vitamin D and how powerful it is to help the body uh, reverse tumor growth is indisputable in my opinion. So. Uh, I just had to add those two little additions. Oh, I almost forgot. I uh, caught myself making the same math error twice, um, talking about going from micrograms to grams. So from a mic one microgram to one gram is a thousand times. No, that's what I said. I just did it again. It's a million times. You know, a thousand times a thousand is a million. So I uh, mistakenly said a thousand times more in two different occasions. It's actually a million times more. Um, yeah, I think I was talking about the uh, iodine and selenium dosages. Is Dr. Vervici, who I didn't mention his name, um, he would inject one gram. I don't actually don't know if it was every day. I just know it was one gram at a time, um, which is one million micrograms. And generally, you know, 200 micrograms is considered to be, you know, safe indefinitely type of a thing. Um, so yeah, 200 micrograms versus one million micrograms of an injected. Uh, selenium on the Dr. Ravici uh, you know, natural chemotherapy protocol um, and then of course the iodine you know the say one microgram of iodine to one one gram is a million micrograms so apologize for that I blame it on uh, traumatic brain injury from my uh, military service and that's my story, I'm sticking to it. Peace. Hi, my name is Scott. Um, I decided to record this video after I got a call from my cousin uh, asking for advice for a friend of his that uh, he'd worked with for many years who was diagnosed with brain cancer. And thought about it off and on for the last week and today I finally decided that let's take some notes and uh, see how short I can do this um, so first off um, in my life I've had two careers 
basically the first 20 years of my life, I was a telecommunications engineer. So at first it was uh, satellite communications, and after that it was as an internet engineer. So I took a year off after I got laid off in 2002 during the, the technology finance bubble and uh, ended up going to work as an office manager at first for a holistic healing center in Midway, Massachusetts uh, with a naturopath by the name of Albert Snow who uh, is known affectionately as Skip, Skip Snow. Um, so I eventually started doing my own consultations about 2007 um, and 2012 uh, put my healing practice on hold and decided to finish a book. Um, I've been working on it uh, for about five years at that point and I just wanted to get it done. I, it, and I was like, man, this, this information is just too important for people not to know. Um, most, you know, pretty much everything that I learned is out there in, you know, various parts and pieces, um, but I'd never seen anyone put it all together in one, one place. Um, and I had gotten, I spent a, three years in North Carolina near Asheville, uh, it's the western part of the state, up in the mountains, and, uh, about halfway through that, I was at like 250 pages, and uh, I was like, I'm halfway through, maybe, and I don't want to write a 500-page book or, or longer, and who wants to read one? So I started over and decided that I would do it as short as possible, so I aimed for 30 pages and pretty much hit it right on the mark. Um, and that was published. It's available for free, um, and all the electronic versions. You know, this PDF and uh, Kindle versions, and uh, it can be found on Amazon for a dollar and uh, Barnes and Noble for free. Anyway, f fast forward to the beginning of 2020 with. Uh, the lockdowns, um, I was like, all right, as I had been planning on doing the follow-up book, kind of going into more detail about just the physical stuff. Um, and so what I ended up doing was using a, a, a internet-based call-in radio platform called Blog Talk Radio. And I, uh, you know, was doing a live show every day for I think I did it for a month straight and after that I started you know, not doing it every day and uh, eventually I you know took big breaks and then occasionally went back to it but ultimately I didn't I wasn't satisfied by the audience that I had um, and uh, decided to not renew the subscription and I was like Two thousand dollars a year for an un, you know three years at uh, three hours a day. Um, so, in case you didn't notice, I'll I have timestamps in the description box. So, you know if if you're uh, like when is he going to start getting to the meat? Like you can use those timestamps to click through to whatever part that interests you the most. Um, but basically, I I took the first few shows and I recorded um, me talking about the the what I call a construction theory of health, and uh, you know talked about each of the different aspects of it, from the raw materials to tools to transportation to communication to energy um, and so on. So that's available at. Uh, on Blog Talk Radio, I have a, a domain name that will take you right to it. 
It's uh, cometalkhealthradio.com. And uh, you can get a lot longer version of what I'm going to present here today. Um, so here's the short and sweet version. So all chronic disease comes with more inflammation. Um, which disease you are diagnosed with basically is determined by where the inflammation is the worst. And uh, you know, simply put, simply put, simply put, um, inflammation gets out of hand when your body doesn't have the resources it needs to take out the trash. Um, you know, the most basic resource is energy. You know, as you you know, we kind of intuitively know, but you know, learn in maybe high school physics that anything needs energy to happen. If there's not energy, well, it's not happening. So. You know, it's energy is required for every uh, every every system in our bodies, every aspect of of life. So you know, we've got the digestive system, the immune system, the nervous system, the circulatory system, and so on. Um, so let's get into uh, two ways to increase the energy that your your body has available to take out the trash and also to, to rebuild damaged systems and to improve the efficiency of uh, a system that's already in pretty good shape. So, you know, the kind of the most basic one is you improve the efficiency of turning the food you eat into usable energy. And that is, you know, has a lots of ins and outs and different pieces of the puzzle. Uh, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail on that, um, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, the second is to use the most commonly used antioxidant, vitamin C. Uh, basically, an antioxidant has energy used to quench you know, so-called free radicals. Um, basically a free radical is you know needing some, needing an electron to <laughs> make it so it won't damage DNA and you know be part of inflammation and then once you have more energy in the body you know ideally your body will know what to do with it so that relies upon uh, communication between the intelligence of your body and the DNA um, being uh, informed about what's happening in the body and where it's happening in the body and then the body responding and delivering those resources uh, to improve your health keep you alive um, so let's see So there's, you know, communication is what was my first career, the first 20 years of my life, um, you know, the last 20 being in holistic health. And, you know, basically there's three different major types of communication in the body. Um, I'm only going to mention how to improve one of those. If you want, um, you know, more detail on what the others are, uh, you know, there's the the 30 page book I wrote and then you know there's the uh, I get into it a bit also in the uh, the, the radio show uh, archive on cometalkhealthradio.com alright so most simple way to improve communication in the body is through nutritional supplements the two that top my list are reishi mushroom extract and CBD. Uh, CBD, as you may well know, comes from cannabis plants, whether it's you know hemp, which is a low THC um, version of the plant, you know, onto the uh, you know the highest THC strains that 
you know, were started and uh, uh, developed out in California and uh, basically in the Northwest. Um, but the one I personally recommend for uh, for the for CBD is actually not just CBD. Um, there's something that's called the entourage effect. Um, uh, approximately our bodies when they're healthy will make I think the number is right around 10 don't quote me on that it could be 20 who knows the research is always uh, finding another one type of a thing um, but when your body's not healthy making cannabinoids um, is just not going to get done um, so that's an you know creating the the uh, compounds that are found within cannabis <coughs> and within uh, medicinal mushrooms in general, but you know reishi in particular, takes a lot of energy. So you're basically outsourcing the manufacture of these compounds that improve communication in the body, and that will help direct the resources where they need to go. Um, so, yeah, I'll have links in the description um, for, you know, my favorite uh, reishi mushroom, medicinal mushroom blends in general, um, as well as a full spectrum uh, cannabinoid product. Um, s basically, it's an extract of a full spectrum includes all the cannabinoids not they don't isolate CBD and just give that to you in a bottle they include all the varieties that are present in the, in the hemp um, I like it because it's available to buy and legally in all 50 states because the THC is so low uh, I found out uh, experimentally that uh, even though the levels are low if you take high doses is high dosa dosages if you take a lot of like the the more powerful um, hemp extracts you can still get uncomfortably high um, so you know that I'll mention here that I don't have in my notes is um, about Rick Simpson oil um, he's an amazing guy. He's dedicated his life to um, teaching people how to grow their own medicine, make their own medicine. Um, he focuses on high THC cannabis um, and then using like rice sized grains um, and even like a fifth of a of a grain of you know rice sized uh, paste that is uh, created when you follow his his process, which is you know, all available for free. You can find out about it. There's tons of videos. You can uh, go to learn more about Rick Simpson oil. Um, and he doesn't sell any Rick Simpson oil. So if you find that anybody out there that's saying, you know, buy this Rick Simpson oil, it's they're being dishonest because he doesn't uh, produce any, any of the, the oil himself for sale. Um, super simple, easy to make, um, but depending on your state laws, could you know, be illegal for you. Um, so, probably the most uh, common way to get more energy into your body is to take vitamin C. Um, basically, any antioxidant is going to deliver more energy into your body. Uh, vitamin C has been you know, researched for so long and the most powerful way to get, in, get vitamin C into your body is intravenously with an IV and it's super cheap. I think if I remember correctly the uh, like a bag of IV vitamin C is like $10, $15. There's a, uh, a short testimony about the power of, of vitamin C used intravenously to reverse cancer. Um, 
and I plan to put a clip in uh, at the very end of this video. And of course, a link to the original. Um, let's see, what's next on the hit parade? Um, you know, as far as finding a medical doctor or um, you know a, a health clinic that will provide IV vitamin C. Uh, I'm not aware of any directory that you can just go in and like search by distance or search by state. Uh, but just you know, use your favorite search engine, and you know you'll find somebody. Hopefully, not too far away from you. Um, there's also the option of convincing your current primary care um, to help. You know, either do it himself or herself, or find help. Uh, have them help you find someone who will do it. Um, but it's, it's like hard to conceive of any safer medicine that should be used in every hospital in the world. But it's not very profitable, unfortunately. And as you probably realize, money is what makes the world go around at this point in our uh, development. Um, let's see, uh, so next best to uh, having it put directly into your circulatory system uh, through a needle is to take as many grams of vitamin C as you can tolerate. And there's, um, I'll put links to my favorite guy who has lots of information and you know, um, tips and tricks on how to how to take, how much to take, what form to take, and all that. Um, basically, if you take too much vitamin C, you're going to have one. You know that the if it's not a buffered form, you can have you know very un unhappy stomach, and beyond that, uh, very loose uh, bowel uh, bowel movements. Um, but those are really the the two concerns, and if you're taking a buffered vitamin C, then you know if you if you keep keep on ramping up the dose, eventually you're gonna hit the point where your stool, your bob movement will be loose. Um, so the next way, the second way that I'll talk about here um, to increase energy in your body is to increase the efficiency of your metabolism. So basically increase the efficiency of your digestion, turning your food into all resources, whether it's just the, you know, the energy we're talking about here, or just, you know, converting protein, say, to the amino acids that your body will actually use to rebuild, you know, build and rebuild. Um, so I have a, a top five list. Um, all five of these are low across the board in America. Um, I think it's a crime that it's not just common knowledge that we're not taught this in grade school. You know, you know, it, it's not complicated. I mean, any at at, <laughs> at the minimum, middle school would be the you know the absolute latest. I'd want anybody to understand this stuff. It's not rocket science. Um, so when, you know, with, with these five essential nutrients being low, it's hard for your body to maintain health. Never mind rebuild, you know, the metabolism and your body when you suffer from a serious chronic disease. Um, so here are my top five. Iodine, potassium, magnesium, selenium, and fiber. And there's two types of fiber, soluble and insoluble. Um, ideally, you'll mix both. Um, ideally, you'll actually just get the, all that fiber from a plant-based whole food diet. But I understand if... Uh, you have a lot of resistance to going there. I personally did. Um, 
I tried a you know a plant-based whole food diet for the first time back in 1997 and um, included in that was uh, a fiber powder which was a mixture of rolled oats organic rolled oats and organic slippery elm um, and a little bit of senna powder senna herb the, the herb senna um, mixed in there to uh, increase motility <laughs> increase the frequency of bowel movements um, so I think the first couple times I did that diet um, I got it with uh, with the center and I think the last time I did it last couple times I did it without um, the slippery elm is just a fantastic um, for reducing inflammation in your digestive system um, so it helps to uh, in the rebuilding process of a healthy gut wall and uh, that's it's such a you know basic part basically your gut is the um, the inner skin you know so it's what separates the inside from the outside world um, like our skin keeps is the yes you know, keeps the outside world outside <laughs> the the digestive system and the respiratory system urinary tract do similar things it's just part of your skin the largest organ in the body um, so uh, um, at the top of the list iodine's my number one go to you know if you do anything take iodine um, it's, you know, was discovered in the late 1800s. Um, it's, you know, my hero as far as iodine is uh, Nobel Prize winner Albert St. Georgie. Uh, he won the Nobel for discovering vitamin C. Uh, he took a gram a day, which is a thousand micrograms. So, you know, the recommended daily intake is like 150 micrograms so is it 200 times uh, you'd think I'd have it memorized by now but so you know there's a thousand micrograms per milligram and a thousand milligrams per gram um, so the standard dose uh, back when he was going to medical school, I think it was the 1920s, um, it was either one or two grams, just standard dose. You know, they had a little rhyme. Whenever you're in doubt, you know, you don't know what to do, use potassium, K and I, potassium and iodine. And um, I started out, uh, I learned about that from a medical doctor in the Midwest uh, his name is Dr. Brownstein, and uh, I had been taking iodine ever since I did that uh, plant-based diet back in 97. I was doing 400 micrograms a day, and it was amazing how, how much that improved my, my energy levels. Um, and then I learned that I could be taking, you know, 20 times that, or, or more, ultimately, um, and I was excited. I just started doubling my dose every single day, and uh, got up to you know about twelve thousand micrograms. And then I started taking a tablet, and um, I took those tablets called Iodoral for years, like ten years, and uh, I changed over to uh, buying packets of potassium iodide and then mixing them with distilled water. And with that, you can uh, basically make your own uh, st whatever strength you'd like to take. You know, there's a little table that tells you how much to scoop into your warmed up distilled water, and then you put it in a dropper bottle and you know, take a drop or more. I, I take um, four drops a day, that each drop has about 50,000 micrograms or 50 milligrams. So I take 200 milligrams a day, which is about what um, the healthiest people, longest live healthiest people in the world, at least 
had been uh, on the islands off of mainland Japan. Um, uh, Okinawa is one of what's called the blue zones and they have seaweed which is the highest uh, food source of iodine. It, you know, you'd have to eat like 20 pounds of fish a day to get the amount of iodine that they get just by eating seaweed at every meal. Um, that's just physically impossible. Um, so either eat seaweed, uh, which I personally don't do. Uh, I'll eat it here and there, but like, I don't know, I'm lazy. Um, putting four drops of water in a water bottle and adding a little bit of, uh, you know, fruit flavored powder um, to uh, balance off the, the metallic taste that iodine has is the way that I've been doing it. Um, I personally have gone all the way up to, uh, it was almost seven grams, seven million micrograms. The only side effect that I had, negative side effect, was um, I had some spicy Chinese food uh, and I ended up getting a nosebleed, which had happened to me once before when I mega dosed on a on a um, antioxidant, and um, so I was like, "Oh, I've done this before." And iodine, by the way, is not only you know essential for making thyroid hormones, but it's also an antioxidant on par with vitamin C. Um, but because of the different roles that iodine has, it's not as um, uh, uh, taking high amounts of it are I guess if you did intravenous iodine you could probably do the similar things actually um, anyway uh, I'll put links in the description about different ways you can start your iodine journey um, there's a fantastic uh, Facebook group that I'll link in there as well that there's lots of people that have been uh, using iodine for in some case decades and uh, they're happy to answer any questions um, there's great books out there uh, let's see number two oh I talked about you know, well, how much do you take? Well, it depends on your level of urgency. You know, if, if I was given three months to live, I wouldn't want to mess around by taking 400 micrograms. I'd want to go like a thousand times more than that, uh, 400 milligrams. That'd be my starting point. Um, and, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, I, I think the highest was like 20 grams with, that was used medically in hospital settings. Um, but it's, uh, you know, as far as the safety profile, you know, vitamin C and iodine, like, it's really hard to beat. Um, there's, you know, I can't think of any pharmaceutical that I've ever heard of in my 20 years of, you know, having my clients talk to me about what they're taking and looking up, you know, the side effects that weren't far, far, far more dangerous than iodine and vitamin C. Um, there's a magic point where, like, the anti-cancer properties of iodine really start, uh, you know, kicking into gear and that's about 15,000 micrograms or 15 milligrams. Um, I learned about that from uh, Dr. Brownstein. Alright, so the next two in the list um, I recommend taking as a single pill. Um, I personally don't take either one of these. I mean, I, I do take potassium as part of my, uh, my iodine because I take the uh, uh, potassium iodine powder or crystals, um, but I don't take magnesium or selenium for that matter, which is the next step. Um, but 
One of the companies that I have high respect for is uh, Source Naturals. They have a um, potassium magnesium product called K Mag. Um, and, you know, basically, you know, I think the ideal range for potassium is like 900 milligrams a day, something like that. You know, there's therapeutic, you know, dosages higher than that. Um, you know, magnesium, you know, even just taking a, a single tablet of this stuff will, will help put your, your body in a, in a better space. Um, and, you know, the... You know, there's so much information on, on, on essential nutrients that I really don't feel a, a strong desire to spend any time going over uh, dosages for, for these more common um, nutrients like potassium and magnesium. I will spend a bit more time on the next one, which is selenium. Uh, this one, I the most I would ever use when I was had an active practice was 600 micrograms a day because there's uh, a concern for uh, toxicity of getting too much of a good thing at about a thousand micrograms you know more than that you, you know, if you take it longer term it can lead to problems um, so I always just said well 600 micrograms and um, you know and I was a sm cigarette smoker at the time, so I, I personally took 400 micrograms a day. Um, I quit smoking, I dropped down to 200 a day, 200 micrograms, and I haven't taken selenium for probably 10 years at this point. But um, a, a doctor of osteopathy who practices down in Brazil, his name is Dr. Circus. Um, I've been following him for a while. Uh, he's, you know, knowledgeable about iodine and m many other different uh, natural therapies. And he was the first one that turned me on to uh, the power and the safety of uh, a form of selenium uh, that's in lipid form, or lipid. You know, lipid means fat. So basically, selenium that's combined with fat that apparently has a toxicity level like at least a thousand times higher than what you can do with standard uh, selenium supplements. Um, it was, he found out about it by a medical doctor who was uh, born in Romania. Um, he uh, he was born in 1896. Um, he got his medical medical degree in Romania in the 1920s. He moved to France. He then later moved to Mexico. And in 1947, he had quite a reputation about the uh, the research he'd done into uh, selenium being an anti-cancer therapy. And he would inject uh, a gram of selenium a day. So you can find, um, you know, this very low toxic form of selenium, and if it was me, I'd I'd start at like fifteen hundred micrograms, which is like three drops of uh, this formula that he developed. Um, but like I said, he he did up to a gram, which is a thousand micrograms. Um, he lived, uh, he practiced medicine in New York, uh, New York City. Eventually, when he was 96, his medical license was revoked. He was on probation. I don't know the details of his probation, but uh, he was, um, you know, spot checked and they found that his record keeping was inadequate, so they said, you violated your probation and we're taking your license away. Um, but he worked until he was 96 as a medical doctor. 
Uh, he died five years later at 101. So that's one of the things I look for in uh, medical doctors is how healthy they look, how long did they live. Um, so you won't find many uh, standard uh, best practices Western medic me medical doctors who live over 100 years old. They tend to live about 10 years less than the average American. Uh, so I don't trust them a whole lot. Emergency medicine, I, you know, they they do amazing work. You know, if you're stabbed, run, you know, car crash, shot, you know, you want a surgeon. Uh, they they are amazing people. So the last on the top five is fiber. That is a five-letter word that's treated like a four-letter word. Um, and it's it reminds me of uh, people who will basically, you know, if you've ever, if you've ever ta personally taken, uh, you know, a high THC edible, uh, gummy bear with THC in it, or chocolate, or what have you, or a cookie, <laughs> that, you know, was made with butter that was uh, mixed with with cannabis flour. Uh, it is very, very easy to take way too much THC and being too high on it, trust me, I've done it, it is no fun. Um, I accidentally, I thought I was minimizing the Anyway, I won't go into that story. I ended up doing a smoothie with cannabis flour mixed in, and I was high for a day and a half. Spent most of that time in bed. Um, anyway, uh, where, where were we? Fiber. So, just like you can, over, you know, easily take too much THC with an edible. Um, you can easily t get too much fiber in. Um, fiber is, you know, there are bacteria in the gut that thrive. They, they can't thrive without fiber. So the, the different strains of bacteria that live in your intestines changes depending on what you eat. So if you're on a relatively low fiber diet like the average American, the bacteria that are needed to uh, you know, easily digest that fiber, their populations are really low. Um, so if you increase your fiber quickly and short, you know, go up to a lot in a short amount of time, um, you're going to have indigestion, and it could be painful depending on how fast you go, you know, how you know, how big of a change you make in a short time. So. I would recommend doing what I mentioned was um, you know, adding a fiber powder. You can buy it off the shelf. You can, you know, buy organic rolled oats, and I recommend highly recommend uh, getting some organic slippery elm and mixing that together, and you know, taking a teaspoon and you know you build up to a tablespoon or two or three, um, or you can go plant based. Or you can do both. <laughs> um, but when your body takes out the trash, most of the trash goes through your bowel movements. Strangely enough, one of the things I learned um, is that m most of what's in urine is actually excess nutrition. There's a, you know, thousands of, thousands of year old uh, practice in India and probably other parts of the world ni uh, near India w where they used urine as a therapy. You actually drink your own urine to help heal your body. Um, I tried it very briefly. I, I, I wasn't sick enough to make it worthwhile to me. Stop doing it. Um, 
interestingly enough, there's a, a medical doctor who was originally from, um, I think it was Hungary, and he developed an anti-cancer treatment that basically he he called them, I think it's anti-neoplastons or something. Um, I'll put a link to the documentary about uh, the journey he went through in trying to treat people with this just super low toxicity tox super low toxicity treatment that just had miraculous results in, in reversing tumor size and um, he's developed other uh, cancer treatments as well and uh, you know using kind of what do they call it um, you know, using a pharmaceutical in a different way than it was originally de designed for, but he, you know, dives deep into the pharmacology and how they work and what they do in the body, and um, amazing guy. So he'll be in the in the description. Um, so yeah, fiber, don't change too too much too fast, and. You know, the reason is because it's going to help your body get rid of the, the trash, the toxic waste that, you know, built up to get you to the point where you're sick. Basically, health is super simple. You know, it's, you know, going back to my, you know, job, jobs as a telecommunications engineer, it's all about signal to noise. And so the signal would be all the essential nutrients, the noise is everything else. Um, so the noise is the trash that your body needs to get rid of. And uh, fiber, fiber and water, proper amount of water, is the way you're going to maximize the taking out the trash and minimize all the you know, um, detox symptoms. Um, because when your fiber intake is low, your water intake is, is, is less than your body weight, um, will determine there's a simple formula, basically half your body weight in ounces, and I do a bit more than that, um, but it's a good starting point, uh, so 200 pounds, half of that's 100, so my original goal was to do 100 ounces a day, I do a third of that first thing in the morning. Um, and let's see, is there anything left on this notepad here? Um, yeah, links are in the description. Um, and to summarize, disease is just a, a buildup of toxins in your body, which ultimately is, you know, a side effect of not having enough energy, and you know, enough of the the, you know, the grease, you know, the raw materials that keep everything moving the way it should. Um, you know, we need all the macros, the carbs, and the fats, and the proteins, and then all the micros, and um, when when your body gets everything it needs and the communication is perfect, you will enjoy perfect health. But getting communications perfect is the ultimate challenge in life and uh, there is no time for that here. So I um, basically when I reopened my practice, once I, you know, t said I was open to doing consultations again, um, after I'd finished my book back in 2015, I, uh, the the offer I make is, if if you want to talk to me, ask me any question you want. We can do it on on a Zoom call or a Skype call. I'll record it. I'll post it on, on YouTube or BitChute or Rumble or what have you. 
probably Rumble is, I think, where I'm going to end up going to. Either that or Odyssey. I haven't really made a final decision. But uh, you can have you know, a couple hours of, m of my time uh, for free. Um, you know, basically, if you're willing to, you know, to be vulnerable and, and participate in a, in a conversation about health, the answers that come, uh, I want to be available to anybody that has a similar, you know, similar health history, similar symptoms as you, and uh, you know that way, you know the potential is anybody in the world can access that uh, and not have to bother me about it. Um, and if you want to keep it private then I'm willing to talk to anybody. Um, you know, we'll uh, either do it face-to-face -face or you know, over Zoom, Skype, uh, but I will charge $300 an hour. Um, so if privacy is that important to you, that's the ticket for you. Um, and with that, I will say adios. And uh, I hope this helps. All right, one more thing, or two more things. Um, so one of the reasons why my cousin reached out to me um, was because I had uh, you know, helped my my brother along, uh, who had been diagnosed with multiple myeloma and um, I mean he he and I have talked here and there um, but not really a whole lot um, and it's kind of funny I when he called me I basically told him he already had the, no the knowledge and experience he needed to help him address uh, reversing his own cancer and that he was smart enough to find out and develop his own healing path um, which he did and uh, he you know, got on a search engine and he found out where multiple myeloma was unheard of and the theory why which he uh, told me which I did not know is turmeric so he he did it around a chemo um, he also did some Chinese medicine and he did a, uh, a high dose you know turmeric uh, extract and he has been in remission for, I think it's a few years now at this point. Um, so it's kind of ironic that I didn't even mention it, given that that's one of the reasons why my cousin reached out to me, because he, uh, he knew that my brother had uh, reversed a disease that you know, is, is managed through pharmaceuticals. Um, but my brother isn't managing his multiple myeloma. He's actually, you know, his blood work shows that he doesn't have the disease. Um, and whenever I think about turmeric, I always think about ginger because one of the things I learned in my study of naturopathy is that of all the herbs in the world, uh, the two most well-researched, powerful, herbs are turmeric and ginger. Um, I don't have any cool stories about the healing power of ginger, but I know it's a digestive aid. It um, helps you digest your food, and uh, that's got to be a good thing, especially in relation to you know increasing energy that's available to you know, do the healing work, taking out the trash. Um, ginger is going to improve the efficiency of your digestion, which is going to give you more energy. Alright, I think that's the last addition to this video. Be well. 
So um, my son was in college and he was 22 years old. And he was diagnosed with stage four testicular cancer. It was one of the fastest growing cancers. Um, and how his particular cancer was diagnosed was that it starts in, in him. It started in the left testicle, uh, metastasized to the kidneys, the lungs, and then it goes to the brain. So they gave him six months to live. Um, it went to two different oncology places. The first uh, the, the first idea was the doctors were going to open him up surgically from stern to groin, um, pull out all the tumors, and then spray him down with chemo. And then I think it was 15 weeks of chemo and followed by radiation. The second oncology place said, no, we're going to do 15 months of chemo. Then we'll open you up, stern him to groin, pull out any tumors are left. And then we'll do another 15 rounds of chemo. So that's kind of what my son was looking at. And he didn't want to do it. Uh, fortunately, about two weeks before he was diagnosed, I'd gone to a seminar. I don't know if, if you or anybody out there knows uh, Thomas Levy. And Thomas Levy is an MD based out in Colorado at the time. And he actually lost his medical license for curing cancer with vitamin C. So I called him up. And he said, oh, yeah, that's no problem. I'll give you the recipe. So he said, look, you're going to um, give him 50 grams of vitamin C in an IV. I want you to run it for th let the drip, allow it to drip for three and a half hours. And then when you get to the very end of the IV, I want you to add in one cc of glutathione. You're going to have to do this now every other day for three weeks, and he should be just fine. So. We've got the CT scan. We've got the uh, the blood test. So we uh, at those times, you couldn't really get a vitamin C. Back in 2006, it was tough around Spartanburg. You couldn't get a vitamin C IV. But um, a friend of mine found me the vitamin C, and, and another friend uh, hooked my son up. And I must say, I've been practicing holistic medicine now for over 35 years. I didn't know it much about cancer, so I was really scared. And this is my boy. Um, but we we went ahead. My son went ahead. We did, we did the three and a half weeks of vitamin C IV. And then my son went back to the hospital, and they re did another CT scan, did a blood test, and there were no tumors, no sign of cancer anywhere. 